And they don't understand that ye are gods. Is it not written in your law that ye are gods? John chapter 10, verse 34, 37. And the scriptures cannot be broken. You see? We fell into the physical realm and we were the gods of the prior universe. In that same revelations, it tells you that the ones that will be raised up were slain before the foundation of the earth. Then I gave you these several stories about the titans that was over think, And I told you that Tiamat was overthrown. Well, in that same Bible, Revelations, it said those who were slain at the foundation of the earth. That revelation was rest. That revelation piece came out of Kemet. When Cambyses raided Kemet, he took a whole bunch of ancient texts back to Persia. And the the, then, the, then the Greeks... To know that you are God is another way of saying that you feel completely with this universe. You feel profoundly rooted in it and connected with it. You feel, in other words, that the whole energy which expresses itself in the galaxies is intimate. It is not something to which you are a stranger, but it is that with which you, whatever that is, are intimately bound up. That in your seeing, your hearing, your talking, your thinking, your moving, you express that which it is which moves the sun and other stars. And if you don't know that, if you don't feel that, well, naturally you feel alien. You feel a stranger in the world. And if you feel a stranger, you feel hostile. And therefore, you start to bulldoze things about, to beat it up, and to try and make the world submit to your will, and you become a real troublemaker. The old dynasty was the last time that extraterrestrials ruled with terrestrials to control interterrestrials. And I'm simply saying this, that Tunicamon, again, when he went into the priest, uh, when he went into Toxila, found that there were underground cities, that there was a race of high-placed persons who had stayed around when many generations and kingdoms had fallen, that welcomed the, the ability to work with people here as an extraterrestrial, not an alien. And this is why we have to be very careful. When you're saying the word alien, you mean anything that's intelligent in the cosmos. And the cosmos has literally trillions of planets. When you're saying mm -hmm. terrestrial, you're talking about the old name for Earth, terrestres and terrestra. You're now saying that an extraterrestrial is a higher dimension functioning person on Earth or in Earth. And this is where the last time when the in-Earth people and the extraterrestrials ruled with terrestrials to raise consciousness. This is what the priest calf didn't like. This is what these, uh, these draconic people wanted to destroy and why they misused that whole concept. They used a pyramid structure, which is one of the best things you can use to get into higher dimensions. And again, the pyramid is, an, is a false name again, too, because that was named by the Greek from Pyramus and Pyre to look upward. In fact, when the Greeks saw this, these structures, both the uh, abacus, not the abacus, the, um, all these cylindrical ones, the, the, the small pyramids, it'll come to me in a minute again. But when they saw these things, it reminded them of something that they would roast things on. And so they mounted as a great big pier, uh, if they would. And so they called it pyrumo, so that that goes straight up. Before that time, those things were called mirrors. And we get the word mister and missus from the plural and singular of those mirrors. And this is what the pyramids were actually called. They were called mirrors. To give some credence to that, when you look at the very city, which one of the biggest pyramids on earth, not the biggest one, by the way, it's not the biggest, but one of the biggest pyramids is found, it is called Egypt. And it is called the city there called Cairo, which it is near. Well, Cairo is Greek. They used CHs and Cs. They did not use that. They used uh, Ks before that time. Cairo was called Kahir, and Kahir means Mars which means, again, that that area was a Martian settlement. The linkage that they had found was that there were people who had come from Sirius, A, B, and C. There were people that had come from Mars, people that had come from another planet that they now become called, called Canis, or a system called Canis Major, and they had ruled here through the people that we now miscall. Um, what do they call these people now? Um, oh, my brain is functioning <laughs> slow tonight. Um, God. Oh, man, why can I forget that? At any rate, these people that you see these heads all over the place. Um, oh, what do you call them? 
Omex. Omex. That's yeah. in. That's in. And their name wasn't Omex. Omex means we rubber. Know, we know. Or people who. Exide. Exide. Yeah. yeah. Well, these Omex were again were called. Uh, there's another name for them. Who are Kanans? And there's another name for it too. Omex meant rubber people, and they try to say that these were the people that uh, raised rubber and worked with rubber. But that was not their name. The actual people there actually were Martian and Syrian, and they had come here to save the Earth when Moon was driven into place. Now, this gets us way out as you want to get. We could just keep going on and on. But the reason why they don't give names to those people is because they were worshipped all over the Earth as the last people to try to free them from the, uh, from the um, rulership of the Dracons. If you notice again, when you go into Angervat, to Thorvat, to Cambodia, to Laos, to, to China, any place you go, you see these great big negroid looking heads. They're all over the place, so much that they try to mm-hmm. get into the ocean. That means that they were all over, the people all over the earth worshiped these people. And they, used, they worked with gigantic things because they had a power of levitation and a power of working with instrumentation that, we're, that has now been lost. That is, again, the time when concentrated thought was used. So that could go on forever, too. Sir Simon, how are you, man? How are you, brother? Brother, well, you know, of course, uh, enough honors, enough, enough respect. And, of course, let everybody know, February 21st, you know, he's in Marcus Garvey Holistic Center in Brooklyn. The doors open at 2 p.m. The event starts at uh, then starts at three o'clock, so um, it's only twenty dollars and uh, twenty dollars, and it's gonna be in Brooklyn, people. You can call me at three four seven five four six five nine seven eight, but I do have a question. We'll repeat that number again: three four seven five four six five nine seven eight. We do have one more week for early bird tickets. If they want early bird tickets, it's fourteen ninety nine. I said fourteen ninety nine, so they can call me. But now I just recently seen. I think it was put up by one of the pills. I, I'm not sure, but brothers, uh, I think they put up about. They 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 let out that scientists found um, a 200,000 uh, year old statue or plate on the moon with a Sumerian uh, uh, figure on it. Uh, uh, Dr. Blair, can you uh, uh, touch on that a little bit, please? I would do you one better. And I want you to give that number out again, too, because I have some people here that I didn't know that number. So if you could repeat it again, I'd appreciate it. Oh, they have God. also found a 1.5 billion year old spaceship with a black woman who drove it. Now, that one freaked me out. And I, I looked at that controversial movie about that, and I did some research. I got of a book that they no, 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 it's, it's listed, again, called Our Mysterious Spaceship Moon. And I went back over that. They banned that book. And not only did it show that our moon is capable of movement, that our moon is a time when we didn't have that moon, but the battle that was fought for black people against those moon people should be told also in history books. So I'm just going to leave it with that one on that basis because there's so much about the moon. There's another whole lecture I give on the truth about our moon, and the truth about our moon will stand you on your head. Think of the sun and the aspects of it being holographic because a lot of people don't do, you know, the um, – the, the simple thinking that's required to say, okay, when you see pictures of them going out of space, quote unquote, out of space, why is it the 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 void of darkness and it's beyond freezing? If this 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 sun is a hundred times the size of the Earth, supposed to be emitting all of you know what I'm saying this light on, onto this planet and through this particular solar system, why can't you see it from space? Okay, are you making a statement? Or your question is what now? I'm, 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 I'm making a statement based on what our common minds should be telling us, but I'm asking you to build upon that particular statement, you know what I'm saying, to try to make sense out of that nonsense. All right. Well, <laughs> then you got to go on a joyride with me on a high-dimension, low-dimension uh, aerial display. First of all, I don't believe the sun is hot. Secondly, I don't believe the sun is bright. And thirdly, I don't believe that most of our meteorologists, astrophysicists, so have ever told us the truth because they're in the mind control and they don't want people to wake up. Let's take on their own volition the things that they're stating and see if it makes sense. And I agree with you on this one. First of all, they said the sun is hot, the sun is bright, and so on and so forth. Okay, if that's the case, why is it supposedly when the Russian cosmonauts went up there, when the American astronauts went out in space, they couldn't find the sun? They found the one in Alpha Centauri, Epsilon Butte, many of these other places, much more brighter than our own sun. In fact, easier to see them than our own sun. If it's so bright, why is it when they got out there where it was, they couldn't find it? Why do they talk about the darkness of outer space if there's so much light? 
Why is it if it's so hot and bright, is it that when the sun is close to us, we have winter? When the sun is far away from us, we have summer. Now, they talk about this in terms of the axis of inclination. It's a bunch of bull. What they're saying again to you is that when you get out there where it is, things change. The things change is because we're under a low frequency full of minerals and, 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 and elements here that counteract that energy and cause friction. That's what causes our real heat, but that gets real technical. I'm not going to try to do that by the air. But also, too, if it is so hot, why is it that comets, uh, meteors, all go through its shell, the corona of the sun, and they're not burned up. Why is it the case then if this is if it's so hot and so bright again? We've been read, oh, I could really go. The point is, again, if you begin to understand the truth about that, then you understand the truth about free energy, which Wilhelm Wright, Nikolai Tesla, many of uh, Warhol Keeley all have talked about, because it means that we are in an energy field already created. And if the magnification of that energy field, when you hit it from a certain angle, makes us think things are bigger than they are, because we're like little children in an envelope of protection. When you get past that, you find out that it's just, it's just a matter of the frequency of our planet. As we get higher in frequency, we're going to find other suns. We're going to find other planets, just like they found as a ring around Saturn now, because as our planet goes up in vibration, we can begin to see things on different frequencies. I know this is really <laughs> going way out, but you have to begin to no, get no, a lot no, of no, no, no. from about a kindergarten way out. feeding us. You're not, you're, not, you're not going way out. Everybody is following you. You know, the chat room is following you. You know what I'm saying? This is not elevated, too elevated for us. So please continue to explain it because you're making things plain and you're lifting a lot of veils, and you're making people think, you know what I'm saying? And that's what this is about, utilizing that muscle in our head. So please, continue. Well, I try to do that, and I'm glad again that I'm, you know, most of the time when I started off. Your audience, your about, audience is here. Just yeah, well, about going. years ago, you know, as I say, I often say this, and it makes people angry, but I tell the truth. I don't like a lot of lies. I'm tired of being lied to, and I don't take lies from people. But I started off where black people wouldn't touch me. White people supported me for, for the two, two, first two years because they were amazed at the, the, the things I was saying as a black man and as a person. Black people said, oh, my God, and they'd gone, and Jesus should get everybody else should get me. Now, hopefully, the people with melanin, who are the rightful owners of this planet, if you can ever own a planet, and are supposed to come into this kind of information before, we lost it. We had Last time we had it was in the 18th dynasty again when you had aliens, oh, I'm sorry, when you had extraterrestrials rooting along with people here. So I'm just simply saying, you've got to throw away the old physics. The old physics was to hold you back. You've got to get into metaphysics. And if you notice now, the physics now is quantum physics. And that's the only right. bunch of physics that I respect that they are teaching you. And what is quantum? Metaphysics. Instead of calling it metaphysics, they say quantum.